Hey folks, Ashley here, allthingsenshi.com. We're going to continue in this video series regarding extrusion or forced eruption of fractured teeth or heavily restored teeth at the gingival margin. And for whatever reason you, you elect to extrude this tooth, now there are a number of indications. I have the PDF, a PDF of a lecture attached in the description of this video. We're going to talk about, we t I talked about in the first video um, regarding this scenario, a premolar either in the man mandible or the maxilla using a simple paper clip and a paper clip uh, in the intracanal using some sort of elastomer elastomeric material. Somebody had asked me a question about what if, you know, what about your occlusion and it's really you have to be creative in this situation whether or not, uh, typically in heavily restored cases like this the entire dentition is heavily restored, so you can cut a small dovetail into the adjacent teeth, the proximal boxes, place the place the composite in there, or um, it's really creative. I mean, we could go over at length. However, what we want to talk about today is an anterior tooth. Now, in this case, um, we're going to talk about uh, a canine, and this has relevancy uh, in my own life because, in this case here, we extruded tooth number six or FDI tooth number one three and it was fractured at the gingival margin. Now this is post extrusion. We had gained approximately four millimeters in approximately say two and a half months. It was fairly fast and one of the things to start out is we just I just finished cementing these fixed restorations. We're about to finish the FTP and these are in lithium disilicate Emax and one of the things you just have to be aware of, these when you do bond these teeth up, and there's only we're going to be using a nigh tie wire in this example, that these teeth can start floating all around. And what do I mean? Well, look at this root proximity issue. See how the margin of the bicuspid is extremely close to the distal margin of the canine. So root proximity. Had we had a longer span of time with the fixed appliances and go down the road with rectangular wires in, a, in, a, in an effort to gain more control over the positioning of the teeth than we would have uh, probably eliminated that. However, we didn't. We restored it. It was The questions that come to mind are pocketing and the length of how long is, it going, or is she going to retain these teeth due to that root proximity. Those are just some questions, and I just I bring them up just for you to think about. So in this case, um, we've got the fractured, and in that past, that last case, we've got a fractured canine. So we're going to show you briefly um, how I s kind of rigged it for that case. So we're going to actually, because we're all restorative folks, or folks that are watching this, what we're going to do is use the example of tooth number six, or this up maxillary right canine. And what I did was, in this case, we just fabricated a simple bisacryl, bisacryl uh, post-core crown, or I mean, you can use whatever material. So we get a provisional restoration on there and loot this in inch orally uh, in the canal space. The things to think about are, will you do the treatment, the endodontic therapy before, after, what kind of looting, um, looting cement will you be using? These are all things for you to sort of, uh, you know, you need to really be creative. Um, this is just to get you on that creative process. So I fabricated fabricated this uh, provisional crown and then we had it looted in with a fairly hefty cement that I was able to uh, remove. And I don't, I'm not going to mention any cements because around the world, around the world everyone has different wor um, types of provisional cements and in one cement that I use could be totally, there could be a, a better one. So I leave that for your comments. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to place fixed orthodontic brackets. I placed, in this, in the last case I just showed you, placed, as the patient calls it, a, use my fingers, half rack. However, uh, it was uh, just the first quadrant. In retrospect, I would have just have done the entire Arch, and we're only going to be using a 1014 night tie wire, so it's fairly a really flexible wire. 
014 round night tie wire. You can use whatever wire you would like. Um, in this case, so we placed orthodontic brackets, appliances, and again, what we're looking for is to make sure that we're not we're trying to prevent the movement of an unwanted movement of, of adjacent teeth. So we're going to place this these brackets as close in one line as possible. Unlike traditional placement of fixed orthodontic appliances, you place them at different uh, locations depending on the teeth. And again, in this one, we're just going to place it straight across. So, and you'll see them if I were to take this wire. Hopefully, it just fits right in all those brackets, almost like a flat line. Now you will get some movement of the adjacent teeth and depending on their occlusion you may want to take that in consideration and actually use it to your benefit. Uh, typically like in that other case we restored a, a number of um, adjacent teeth in the maxilla and normally with badly broken down teeth the adjacent teeth are going to be in a similar sort of uh, state. <coughs> so. In this case, we're just going to, I'm going to show you the one quarter, so we just place our night tie wire and then actually place these brackets uh, in a straight line, the adjacent teeth, and we're going to link them together for anchorage. Um, as in orthodontics, the mantra is every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so we want to prevent as much, um, if we're going to extrude this tooth, bring it inferior, we want to prevent as much superior or apical mo motion, motion of the adjacent teeth. Additionally, so then you can see that I place on our tooth we're going to extrude the, the bracket as, as gingival as possible. Now if you don't have time to do all this, you don't have this, the uh, materials, you can place the bracket simply like this. The world really is your oyster coming and thinking of trying to troubleshoot these situations. Uh, I didn't place the brackets on here, but it would be a very similar situation. And additionally, the next video what I'm going to talk about is using a hook. Uh, instead of provisionalizing. So simply we're going to place our 014 nitai round wire into our brackets. And you can see how that's sort of, this bicuspid is a little bit angled. And we're going to place our, I don't have power chain, but you can use power chain or any way to obtain anchorage. We're just going to, for this demonstration, tie the two bicuspids together. Zoom out here. We're just going to use our math out plower pliers. I'm just going to tug on the wire a bit just to stretch it and then tighten it in. That's good. Clip that. And then sort of to, don't clip this too short. We want to have it a decent length so you can unwind it. I'm just going to place that here. It's like a rosette. And then I mean every situation is going to be different whether you can get this wire up there and then place it back in these brackets down like that and have it stay and then do your tying off okay so we're just going to finish up steel lig tying ligature tying these uh, three anterior teeth again it's going to pull Stretch the wire just a subtle amount. Here, clip. Okay. 
Again, we're not we're clipping it not super short, just enough so you can wind it underneath, and then you, this allows you to unwind this much easier. So now we have our 014 nylon tie wire link tied in. Uh, we have these steel these teeth are anchored together with steel ligature wire, and additionally these bicuspids, and then we have it up uh, moving superiorly or apically to uh, this canine. Now the, the neat thing about this versus uh, using some sort of hook procedure is that the recall procedures or follow-up are pretty simple uh, in that as this tooth becomes extruded you just need to adjust the, the incisal length or cuspal length, it's a canine, take out the wire, uh, reset it, place it back, and as this tooth slowly extrudes, see if I can do it here, so it's going to slowly, not like that, well the tooth will come with it, but for <laughs> demonstration purposes, um, as it comes to about this point, if you're unsatisfied with the position, you can take this wire out, see if I can do it here, and unsatisfied with the amount of extrusion, just another another way to gain a, a little more distance is just to place the eye tie wire above the two wings when you go to retie it in. So place it like that, and then that will give you just a little more uh, coronal movement. Okay, so not as a little more difficult to show uh, on a dental form. In any event, this procedure would probably take anywhere from three to four months with a retention period of say four to six months. And the retention period can be in the straight brackets or in the fixed appliances can be uh, bonded. It's really, again, it's more up to um, your creativity. So I hope that helps. Cheers.